you probably know that Curator comes with a ton of predefined rules and so as you, you plug the appliance, define your network, basic stuff, what's the external network, DMZ, etc. And you know, your screen looks something like this, starts firing up on offenses and things that requires your attention. Uh, so in this set of videos I'm going to show you uh, how easy, uh, how intuitive is this interface for you to learn. And let's say that all you need to know is uh, some basic IP lingo. Uh, but let's say that you, you got uh, Curator, you need to uh, deploy and maintain these and you got no training. Let's see if we can help you a little bit with that. So let's look at this uh, last offense in here. 1025 x4 connection to a non botnet so we can do as i have done in previous videos show the, the events and the flows and you know top categories etc but i'm going to show you a different approach uh, in this case let's uh, actually look at the rule that actually fire all the rules that fire uh, to this uh, to this uh, particular uh, offense so we have two, an excessive firewall. Let's look at this X-Force malware. And what we have in this system is we have a feed from export, X-Force that tells us, you know, what are the sites that have bad IP reputation? Who are the bad guys that are known based on all the, 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 the networks that, that we in IBM maintain and, and inspect uh, where, where the bad guys are, right? So if we click on this particular rule, we're going to see that the rule says, well, we see, you know, communication coming to a local system uh, when, when, when any IP is part of this, you know, premium, uh, premium package. Pretty simple. So now let's actually go ahead and, you know, we see that this is the source IP and, uh, and this is the destination IP. So, so this is the bad guy uh, in China. Uh, that is a known uh, bad site but all the things that we can actually do is uh, we can actually show the the view the the attack path if we click in here we see okay now this is the the range of the ips is uh, is the 110 network slash 24 that means the two uh, from 0 to 255 which encompasses this and these are the the devices that are in the way for the connection to the internet. So, let's look at another uh, offense, and we're going to be building in complexity as we move along. Uh, let's look at uh, which one is a, is a simple one here. This one, 885, distributed denial of service uh, attack uh, detected. So again, we can display the rule that fire on this particular device, and you know this is the source IP and IP in Romania. Right? But let's look at the at the actual rule, and we see that the rule says, well, when I see you know an attack on a local system, and there are at least 1,000 flows seen from the same destination IP to different source IPs in two minutes. And that's a DDoS when you get, mo you know, one single IP is being attacked by multiple IPs. And this kind of, uh, you know, in two minutes, getting more than a thousand flows, uh, I mean, it's something that is significant. So, to, you know, want to add more logic into this, th there's a, a ton of, you know, things that you can add and build very complex rules already all you need to do is click on any one of these and and you know configure it and you have more sophisticated rule and believe me there are, there are plenty of options already ready for you uh, the other thing that you can actually do is that you know when you get this type of offenses or any kind of offenses uh, you can actually uh, combine them into a, a single offense and so uh, like, like this right now, or you can actually add all those flows into a single offense. Uh, you, you play here with parameters like the severity, credibility, and relevance. And, and you can do things like, I'm going to send an email when this offense happens, or send a, a syslog to some, some other system. Uh, add it to a reference set, and we're going to show that uh, later when you detect that, you know, some suspicious devices, IPs, etc. And you want to monitor them more closely, then uh, reference sets are a good match for that. Uh, you can trigger a scan and you can say, well, when, when that element behaves strangely, 
clean. Go ahead and scan it to see if there are uh, new vulnerabilities into it. Let's move on and look at another offense. Let's go back to the list of all the offenses and look for which is a good one. Uh, nine. Uh, let me look at here. Actually, this is a good one. Uh, authentication attempted for an, an, an unauthorized user. So this is the case in which you have your identity management system and when, when somebody is no longer an employee, let's say you're a privileged user or, you know, that you, you, you in theory have all your system to make sure that that guy doesn't have access to the network, but you want to make sure that that's the case. You want to provide like a safety net. Uh, and this is what, what this uh, rule is all about. So authentication attempted by an authorized user. So let's, let's investigate this by looking at the rules. So we go display rules and we actually see the rule. It's in here. It's only one rule. Let's uh, open it up and see what's in there. This rule is a little bit more complex. You know, you, you have applied suspicious activity on a local system and when the event is authentication. So this only fires when you see somebody logging into something, authenticating into some system. And when any of the username is contained on terminated users. What is this terminated user? This is a reference set. This is a list that you can actually manually or via APIs populate with the people that you want to make sure that these people were terminated. You can put their uh, username, host names, IP address, MAC address, whatever you want to put in there. Actually, let me show you how, how you set that terminated users. Uh, and, and this is just a name that we put in here. So we're going to go into the admin tab of the tool. And we are going to look for reference set management right here. So we click on it and we have a couple of reference sets. And again, this can be dynamically or manually populated. And you, you, as we saw before, a rule can actually populate dynamically and add things or delete things from a, from a reference set. So let's look at this terminated user. And in here, we see that uh, these are the terminated users, you know, Spock, Jane, Craig Match, all these guys, right? Well, pretty good. So let's go back to the to that rule that we were working with. So let's click on the offenses tab. We are we are right here, and let's look at the, for example, the uh, the events, and see if we find any one of those events that that shows that one of those users that are on that reference set have actually authenticated. And here's one that looks promising. Let's click on this one in here. And we see this is the user, you know, somebody tried to, to access or, or actually was detected that the user actually logged in. Uh, what's the user? Well, look at the username. It's Craig Matt. That's one of the guys that was in that list. So you see that this is like provides like a safety net in which, you know, yeah, your identity management is fine. But just in case, I want my SIEM to tell me when these things happen.